Hello folks, my name is Moss for LockMaker360. I'm building a YouTube playlist about the fundamentals of the Arduino board. And so far I upload videos about the software side. Uh, I explained what is a sequence, how you can make a selection. And in the last video I talked about looping. And in this video I like to talk about the last big building block in Arduino programming, interrupts. We as uh, humans have interrupts all the time. Like you are reading a book and then your phone rings and that incoming call is interrupting your book reading. Or you are watching this boring video and your grandma is baking a cake in the kitchen and the smell of the cake interrupts and you forget the video and all you want is a slice of the cake. In those videos I use an Arduino based simulation software called Uno Ardi Sim. This is free software and in the first video about Arduino fundamentals I explained how to set it up and I recommend you this software because it can be very helpful to see what's going on inside your code. Okay guys, if you work with an interrupt, you need to be aware about a few things. And uh, The first thing is that by the design of an Arduino board, the factory attached special components to a few pins. And those components make interrupts possible and the problem is that they are only built in on a few pins so not every pin can handle an interrupt and on the arduino uno we have only two interrupt pins digital two and three and another confusing thing is that if you use those pins for interrupt purpose then they are not called two or three but 0 and 1 and in this uh, little schedule you see the interrupt numbers on top and the boards over here and for example the UNO has two interrupts and they are connected to pin 2 and 3 but if you write it down in the software you have to use interrupt number 0 or 1 the MECA has five interrupts but uh, you have to watch out with the Arduino Leonardo because for some reason interrupt numbers are in the opposite direction so if you copy code which is written for an Arduino Uno and upload this to the Leonardo then you have a conflict with uh, the interrupt pin number and you have to debug it change the number or you have to change the wire or find another way to get it running but be aware about the difference in board type and on the Arduino Duo all pins are built-in interrupt pins and they just listen to the pin numbers. So and this is what happened in uh, the code inside the big model loop it's doing a, a instruction another instruction and then there is an interrupt and then it jumps out the loop and then it does its own code and then it jumps back you're watching this video and then you smell your grandmother's cake and you stop the video you run to the kitchen you grab uh, a slice of a cake and you run back to the video and press on play and you see the rest of the video so let's uh, build something like this inside the, the software and I set up a very small sketch over here in the loop I have a counter and every time we looping we add one to the counter and we write that down in the serial monitor. Now we are gonna set up a button. If we press the button we are interrupting in this loop and then the interrupt will reset the value. So it will set the counter to zero and to do this we have to write a special kind of function which is called an interrupt service routine and this kind of functions cannot return any value 
and they have no parameters. So uh, very easy. They are not allowed to return something, so it's always void. And let's call this one a reset counter or reset button. No arguments in the quotations. And if you don't know how to set up a function, watch the previous video about functions. And in here we write counter is zero. And that's all we do for the uh, interrupt service routine function. There are uh, four advices to make an interrupt service routine and that's uh, keep it short. Use the keyword volatile. With this you are telling the Arduino that the data type integer is uh, volatile. So you are expecting that you are going to change the value a lot. Don't use delay inside the function. But you can use another uh, delay function that's called delay microseconds. And don't use uh, serial communication. This is because if you write down serial.print under the hood the Arduino is doing a interrupt. And if you are inside an interrupt and you make an, an interrupt inside an interrupt, you slow down your program and it wouldn't crash, it would work, but it's very bad programming. So let's see how we tie all those uh, pieces together. Well, to activate an interrupt, we go to the setup and we write down a touch interrupt. And that's a keyword function, a built-in function. And you need to place in there three parameters. And the first parameter is the interrupt pin on which you have connected the button. And in my case that's zero, which is pin number two, as I explained before. And the second parameter is the is this function. So we type in here reset button. But this time you don't have to place quotations. And for the third parameter you can choose between one of those five. And this has to do with what is connected to the pin. So in my case there is a button connected to the pin. So if I press the button there will be a fall in current or there will be a rise in current. So I can choose between rising and falling. And I choose for rising. And you see that it uh, is a keyword as well. It turns blue. And uh, up here I set uh, the pin mode from pin number 2 which is uh, interrupt pin 0 to input pull up. And if you want to know more about uh, input pull up you can uh, watch the video up here or I will put a link in the description if you're looking for my mobile device. So uh, I uploaded the code and over here inside the serial monitor you see that the counter is uh, building up and if I press the button then it's uh, zero again. And inside uh, the simulation uh, environment I found out that you have to place the interrupt service routine function above the setup, otherwise the interrupt is not working. And that uh, I don't know why, but that's the way it is. And if I uh, I connect this push button here to pin number two, and if I And if I uh, double click on pin number two, and it opens a current line here. And if I run, then you see that it starts looping. And if I click on this button, you will see that the current line will interrupt, like there, and that the value reset. Like you see over here. And if I stop it. So uh, the counter is 6 uh, on the moment. If I click on the interrupt button. And I do it step by step. You'll see that the first step after the interrupt is it jumps to the interrupt function. Reset the value 
to zero. You see over here. If I uh, write inside the interrupt service routine function to the serial monitor, then uh, look what happened. If I press the button, it will. So now, if I press the button, it will write reset inside the serial monitor. So run it. And I click, and you see there is a big strange behavior here, and that has to do with we are, we are activating an interrupt, and inside the interrupt, it it's trying to write to the serial monitor, but writing to the serial monitor is our interrupt itself. So it's an interrupt inside an interrupt, and in this in this simulation software you see. That it's almost crashing, but on the reload, you know, it's going better, it's going smoother, but it's not clean programming. So uh, keep your code uh, short, do not uh, use uh, delay in there, don't write to the serial monitor, and uh, use the keyword volatile if you, if you change data. Uh, this is uh, the end of the video. Thanks for watching. You will find a link uh, to the code uh, below the video. Please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel to see uh, more upcoming videos about uh, Arduino fundamentals. And uh, the next video will be about uh, timer interrupts.